What's up, divas and Devo? So happy new year, everyone. Happy new year. Your girl is finally back for good. Like, okay, listen, hunties, listen. First of all, it has been a long month for me. Okay, super duper long. Tomorrow will be five weeks post op operation, whatever you guys want to call it. I'm not really sure what you call it, but it will be five weeks. So I am so happy that this whole entire journey has been over and done with. Okay. The only pain that I feel is like the soreness in my stomach, you know, but other than that, you know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I cannot wait to go back to exercising because a bitch did gain some weight. You know what I'm saying? So I did gain like five pounds and I'm not really stressing it, but you know, I will get it off when it's time for me to go and, um, excuse you, pancake. I will, um, I will definitely lose it once I'm able to exercise normally. Um, but the only exercise that I really get now is walking the dog and I have to wait for like eight weeks. I do go back on the eighth to the doctor's. So I cannot like wait until this is over and done with. What? I'm doing a video. You cannot be up here. You know, mommy is mad with you. You growled at Wuzzle. No, I'm mad with you. Go, go lay down. Go lay down in your bed. Go ahead. Go lay down. So go lay down in your bed. So I'm, I'm just happy that everything is over and done with. And, um, you know, if you guys have not seen my, my new dog, that's pancake. Um, and I did show her like two weeks ago in my last real talk because I didn't do a real talk last week because it was the day before Christmas and you know, Christmas was on a Tuesday. So I really wasn't going to record anything. I was just so overwhelmed and tired that I just really couldn't. So I did show her two weeks ago. So she's been with me like two weeks now, a little bit over two weeks. And, um, what are you doing? Hey, she is like attached at the hip. Like I, I didn't remember giving birth to no furry, furry, furry animal. Like, you know, but we, we cool. Me and her is cool. She's really a good dog and everything. She came from the shelter, right? The rescue dog and she's two and her name is Pancake, right? Pancake. So, you know, she likes to stay wherever I'm at, which is cool, but sometimes it could be a little bit too much um, because she cries for me if I'm leaving or anything, you know, but we cool, right? We cool. So. Other than that, you know, New Year's, it's New Year's. Today is New Year's. It is the 1st of January. So this is my real talk for the new year, okay? And like I said, I feel like I'm back to myself. I got my makeup on. It, listen, I don't barely got any damn makeup on, but it took me long enough. This is late for me. This is, it's 6.52 p.m. here. I really did have intentions, good intentions today on doing like four videos, but I don't really foresee myself getting that done because it's so late in the day. So I'm just going to do the one after that about this half wig that I made. You know what I'm saying? Even though I did put a little bit too much coconut oil in it, it looked a little bit greasy and stuff, you know. But I will do that video. Um, you know, I've already got a style, so it is what it is. But other than that, you know, it is um, a new year. And um, I'm just looking forward to it. I'm not trying to be irritated, stressed out, annoyed, pissed off, or unmotivated or broke for 2019. Like I'm not about to go out like that. So, you know, um, and that's about it. You know, I was actually going to go back to the doctors and go back and get my shots for my keloid because as you guys noticed, it did grow back again. I did have it not surgically removed, but I was getting cortisone shots in it, and it went so flat to where you couldn't even see it. So the downfall about having a, um, a hypertrophic keloid is the fact that it just it just keeps growing it keeps growing and sometimes if you just keep picking at it and getting um things done to it like surgical removal or laser remover or cortisone shots it will make it worse so i'm not really sure i'm thinking about it i don't really know because like i said it was only flat for like i would say about six months and now it has been growing back and it started really irritating me a lot so i'm just thinking like maybe i should just leave it alone and just live with it and deal with it you know it does bother me because it does hurt sometimes but i would not want it to get to the point where because i have had it removed you know i have known a lot of people who had it removed 
had theirs removed and they've grown back. So that's the only downfall about it. Um, I did see someone sent me a tag me on Instagram. A young lady had one in the exact same spot. She had to get it cut off and she got cut all the way to like right here, which was a lot out of the way. And I think she had a skin graft over it too, it looked like. Um, I don't think I would really want to go that far for it. I would just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? Just leave it alone. I don't really want to go through all of that. Because let me tell y'all, I really wanted to go and get my my um my butt done. You know what I'm saying? Like get it lifted because I have enough. I was going to take the fat from my stomach. But after this surgery, let me tell you, having surgery will put you down on your ass. Like that 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 was an experience that I cannot um I will not forget. Seriously, I will not forget um, to this day. I will not forget. So I just think I'm just going to continue doing squats, okay? And hopefully my stomach will go down. So as you guys know, it's Real Talk Wednesday. I love you guys. I'm glad to be back. You know, it just, it's going to be hard for me to get back into the groove of things because I have been gone for a minute. You know, I do post up videos here and there, but those were already pre-recorded. So, you know, it will, it's, it's, it's like, you know, I, I've been away for a month do, without recording a video. So it's kind of like, okay, let me just try to get back into the groove of things. So I'm really trying my best to do that. I really, honestly, I was just like, oh, I don't feel like doing any videos today, but I can't keep doing that because, you know, that's not me. I don't want to get lazy because I'm, that's definitely not me. Though I'm never lazy, but I just don't want to get that way. I've been making wigs, okay, the whole time that I've been out, like, not the whole time, but enough of the times, okay? I've been doing that. So, you guys, let's just get into this real talk. If you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the names of everybody that's in your email, hunties, you know how to well, spread the tea, but you want everybody to know. You can always change the names and let me know. So, but if you don't change the names, you didn't tell me that. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, baby daddies, baby daddies, I'm gonna change it for you. Okay. So let's get into this real talk. Okay. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. Okay. Names have been changed. Hey April, first I would like to say I'm so happy you are on the mend. You are on the mend and I had total and I had a total hysterectomy about 12 years ago. It was an adjustment when I had it, but I'm glad I did. I'm in love with your new puppy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you know what I'm saying? I haven't been reading in a while. I'm in love with your new puppy. Um, LOL. I wrote you a few times before about my daughter. Thank you so much for the advice. But I have another situation. <clears throat> Let me go back a little bit about my husband and myself. We have been married for 17 years. We grew up on the same block. Our grandmothers lived on, um, and we used to fight over big wheels as kids. And we would have known, and who would have known we would end up, move away, and both of us move back on the block around the same time and reconnect 17 years later. OK, we got married and we had two children together. Well, we have our ups and downs because marriage is work and some days are not always sweet, but we are committed to stay with each other, even when things get hard. Well, let's call me Tiffany and my husband, Derek. We both have big dreams and we both try to support each other. But I have a little issue. My husband wants to open a legal weed shop. I'm very skeptical about because one, I don't feel he has thought the process out very thoroughly. The reason I say this is because he hasn't thought about the business part of it. He thinks he can just open it up and quit his job and everything will work out. First, we have a daughter that needs insurance for her mental issues. And second, I need insurance for my illnesses that I have. So that part hasn't been thought out. All businesses don't start off making big money from the beginning. I just don't want us to be in a situation where we start losing things because of lack of research from the business standpoint. Don't get me wrong, I will support him with whatever he wants to do. But I'm also very afraid. Am I wrong for not wanting to support this or should I just go with it? That means I would have to pick up the slack to make sure nothing is shut off or house is not foreclosed on the car, is not taken away 
be in repo. I just look at long term. And with me being sick, I already had to cut my hours down a little bit for health reasons. And one more thing, we also bump heads about him doing more around the house. April, I do everything from taking care of everything in the house, making sure our daughter is okay and making sure everyone is okay. I take care of everything, literally. He comes home from work. He works Sunday night through Thursday night. And from the time he gets home on Friday mornings, he is in our room. I also think he is battling depression, but I have encouraged him to go see someone, but to no avail. I have even started seeing a therapist to help me with my own problems, thinking it will get him motivated, but nothing. We have talked about his helping out situation to always end up in an argument. We also have two grown kids, 20 and 18, that are lazy as hell. I tell them the same thing and they just think I'm crazy saying mama is tripping. She's always yelling about something, but I'm tired and no one understands that I have an illness called interesting. Okay. In I think this is in interstitial sciatus. You can Google what the illness is about. Okay. It will take me all day to explain it, so just Google it, girl. So I'm not always feeling my best. Bottom line, she's got an illness, okay? I'm not always feeling my best, and I work at a dental office, so we are always busy. To come home with dishes in the sink, house just nasty. I know I'm all over the place, but could you help me out? This is very long, and, I'm, and I apologize. So sorry. But a sister is tired emotionally and physically. Thank you so much for any advice. Love, Tiffany. P.S. I sent a picture of my whole family at my daughter's graduation from June. Thank you so much. So first of all, Tiffany and Derek. They have been married for 17 years, and they got two kids together, two grown-ass, lazy motherfucking kids, 18 and 20 years old. So Tiffany is, you know, she's suffering with health issues and shit, and, you know, she had to cut back on the hours from work because of her health issues. Her husband, he wanted to quit his job and open up a, a legal marijuana spot, okay? That's cool, but he not thinking about the business aspects of it. First of all, let's just say this. It ain't even got to do with no business with we shot. It's got to do with any type of business that you decide to open. First of all, don't ever think that as soon as you open up a business that it's just going to be popping. It ain't going to be popping as soon as you open that shit up. Your name got to get out there. You know what I'm saying? You got to reach the ranks on the Google list. Your name got to be out there. You got to know someone and know someone and know someone to be even popular. Like those sites, like, you know, Pretty young, pretty Little Thing or whatever that website is called, what the Kardashians own. I don't know who, who, who somebody owns it. You know what I'm saying? Pretty Little Thing or whatever that is. You know what I'm saying? That they know because that's, that site, that site is popping because you know, a celebrity is owned by, a celebrity owns that, or their name is on it, or some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, when it's like little people like myself, it take us a minute to open up some shit. Like, you know, it take us a minute to get some some real business going in there. It don't happen overnight. First couple of years, your ass be broke from, you know what I'm saying, from the business aspects of it. So, you know, a lot of times when people open up business, that's, this is just me, they gotta have a side hustle. They gotta have a job, a side hustle to bring in the real money. Okay. That's just like, you know, a lot of these hair companies that are just starting out, not, not the Asian based ones, but you know, us American girls who want to open up our own little online boutiques and stuff like that for hair. You, I I've noticed that a lot of them that I've done reviews for, they still have a regular nine to five job. Okay. They still work in a regular nine to five job because they money ain't coming in like that. There's so many other different weave and bundle shops, just like there are so many different other cannabis, legal cannabis, legal marijuana stores, okay, that you can walk into. You have to build up a rapport. You got to build up a reputation. You can't just think that overnight it's going to be popping. It's not going to be shit popping. It's not going to be like that. So you still have to have your side hustle. And let me tell you, the lazy part with the 18 and 20 year old girlfriend, listen, I can attest to that and I can totally feel where you are coming from because just today, just today, a girl had her New Year's talk with the family because it's the same thing. Like, I bust my ass. I might not leave my house to go to work, but let me tell you something. As an entrepreneur who runs her own shit, 
Don't nobody help me run none of my fucking wig businesses. Or go to the mailbox. Go send shit off. Edit my videos. Nobody does any of that but me. I do it all. So there are nights when I don't go to bed till like 3 o'clock in the morning because I'm so busy washing wigs, styling wigs, making wigs, editing the video, recording the video. You know what I'm saying? So my days be super long and I work every single day. And if I don't work, then I feel like I'm being lazy. So every single day, I'm doing something. That's why I said it's kind of late for me because I don't really like to do videos this late in the evening because I already got to edit them. You know what I'm saying? So lazy is one thing that we cannot have. Like, And I feel you. What are you doing over there? Come over here. I feel you with that. Like, okay, I just had to have the same conversation because there's no reason for me to have to do everything around here. If that's the case, then I don't need you here. And I've already given my, you know, my ultimatums, not ultimatums, excuse me. I've already gave, what are you doing? Come over here. Come from behind the, come over here. Come on. I've already given my um, eviction notices. So they do have to the end of this month. What? Okay. They do have to the end of this month. And then that is when, you know, they're moving out. But still, in the meantime, you're still here. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. If they don't want to wash no dishes and they don't want to do shit, then don't do shit for them. If they need a ride somewhere, don't give them a ride. If they need a couple of dollars, don't give them a couple of dollars. Let them know, listen, first of all, ain't shit around here for free, okay? You have to earn your fucking keep. And if you don't like it, there are two exits. Well, I say four here because you could take the front door, you could take the garage door, you could take the back door, or you could leave out your motherfucking window. So however many exits you got in your house, you can let them know. And if you don't like my rules, then you can surely go. If your kids don't have no job, then it's time for them to get one. And they need to help out. Can't nobody be sitting around in the house doing shit all day. I think that that's so disrespectful for you to have to come home from work and have to pick up the slack and do everything for everybody else when they've been there all day. And they've been putting dishes or putting dirt or doing whatever the fuck they're doing and they're not helping out. This is the problem with the youth today, honey. They feel like they got to pass all the time. These kids, these teenagers, these young adults, they feel like they always got to pass and they feel like they are entitled to shit. And listen, honey, you're not entitled to nothing. Me, I'm, I'm not entitled to shit, okay? Who are we to say we are entitled to something? But a lot of these kids feel like we are the ones that supposedly should be giving them what they ask for, what they want, clean up after them, bring them to and from. No, bitch, we're not a lift. We're not motherfucking Uber, nor are we the fucking um, ATM machine. This is the problem with the youth today. They don't realize that they have responsibilities. And you have to make them aware of that because let me tell you, when I was growing up back in the day, you best be cleaning up and you best be having something done. Don't let my mother come home from work with no dishes, are you listening to, with no dishes in the sink, because then it's a problem, you know what I'm saying, I guess she's just listening to, she's taking it all in, because she's like, okay, let me, let me hear this, so I feel like, you know, there's no reason why you should be sit, um, coming home from work, and having to clean up after grown-ups, those are grown-ass kids, and if you know they lazy, then you need to get on their ass, but here's the thing, even though you do, this is the problem, I've noticed, when I be yelling and screaming and spazzing the fuck off, it's like nobody don't understand me. And the, the first thing that come up their mouth is, she's spazzing. Mom be bugging. She be bugging. She tripping. Mommy's tripping. Same thing here. Same thing here. Or I'm the bad guy. Same motherfucking thing here. Okay? Same thing here. But I've noticed that when I have gone to them and I have said to them, listen, let me tell you something. You got some dishes up in there that you need to be doing because today we're not about to sit up in here and do nothing all day. You're going to need to go in there and clean up that room. And I'm not going to come in here and tell you again. Do you understand me? Yes, ma'am. And then I walk off. I'm not even trying to give you no time to explain to me because I really don't care fucking hear what you got to say. I've been told you this before and I'll get to it and let's do it. This is how sometimes you have to handle them because if you spazzing out and you're going off on these young adults, they always swear that we bugging out and we tripping when in reality, it's not that we tripping. It's the fact that, hmm, we done said this shit to you on numerous occasions. And after a while, don't nobody want to hear that shit no more. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to have to keep saying it. And by now my blood pressure is boiled and over the top because I done had to repeat myself to you 
on several different occasions about these motherfucking dishes, your room, and this goddamn bathroom. So now I'm off the top of the meter. My fucking top has popped, and I got all kinds of lava and fire spewing from the top of my head. Amongst that, my mouth is probably filthy because I'm spewing at your ass. So that's the reason why we end up screaming and yelling at them because, yeah, we've told you this on several different occasions all the time. I don't think that I should have to keep repeating myself. So what you need to do is let them know, listen, if you don't like my rules here, there's always an exit for you to leave out and you can go ahead and take it. But you won't be taking nothing that I bought for you. Now, as for your husband, you need to have a serious sit down with him. Honestly, I think like you personally need to have a sit down with the whole entire daggone family like straight up and i say this because it's one thing to talk to each person individually you know what i'm saying like okay i'm gonna talk to this person and i'm gonna talk to this person and i'm gonna talk to my husband but sometimes it's best to just have a family meeting and explain yourself and allow them to see where you're coming from because everyone will be all in one area and we can all get the gist of it and we can all get the understanding you know what i'm saying instead of you having to tell one person at a time because you know then the next person go back well mommy said this and you didn't say it that way or you didn't say it at all i think like the best thing for you to do is to have a family meeting with everyone in the household okay now as for your husband and his business with wanting to open up a marijuana shop okay i understand he wants to make a profit he wants to be his own boss there's never anything wrong with that but there's always a cost that you got to pay to be the boss you just can't roll over at night and wake up the next morning and feel like okay my my business is going to be booming i'm gonna have it all down everybody's gonna come here to Roscoe's marijuana weed shop. It's not working like that. It don't work like that. And then also you have to keep in mind, now, when there's weed, it, there's, there's, there's different clientele. Different clientele smoke weed. And a lot of times when you have a weed shop, there are always like more than one person that works in this particular environment, okay? Only because of the environment that it is in, you can have type of people that come in that are on drugs, you can have type of people that come on there that are rowdy. You can have type of people that come in there who are belligerent, you know what I'm saying, who are resistant and just violent. You, you have all types of walks of life that come into those type of dispensaries, okay? Bottom line, it's a weed dispensary. You're going to have all types of people coming in there. And a lot of times, these dispensaries, they are well known for carrying a lot of cash. Now, you can't just be the only person working in there and feel like you're going to be able to handle everything. So your husband has to think about, oh, he has to hire employees because he can't run the place by himself. There's no way that you can run a weed shop by yourself and be able to watch people that's in there and then serve another customer and then see the person that's walking through the door and make sure that this motherfucker ain't coming in at gunpoint trying to rob us for the weed or, you know, saying coming in because he's a weirdo acting crazy for the week. You know, what I'm saying you need to be on guard at all times. Plus, in the evenings when you close, you have to make sure that your shit is secure. So that means like you need a good security system or security guard. I mean, there, there's a lot of shit that goes into marijuana shops. It's not just opening up the weed and getting your license and serving people that have like a marijuana car. It doesn't work like that. There is a whole lot of shit behind the scenes. And that's just like with any store in general, okay? A clothing store, a marijuana store, a hair boutique. There are all types of things that play part. And I think like some things your husband hasn't thought out well. You know what I'm saying? It's great to want to own your own shit, but with owning your own shit, owning your own house there comes shit like okay if the water heater breaks i gotta make sure i got the money for it if the roof needs fixing i gotta make sure i got the money for it so everything that you own you have to make sure that you maintenance and you are able to maintenance that's even with a car you know what i'm saying you can't just bring the car back to the place and be like well I, it needs an oil change so can you do this cha-ching you have to have the money for that and like you can't just think like i'm gonna quit my job and just open up a shop don't work like that you can't pick up all the slack you're only one person 
and not even if even if you didn't have an illness you're one person you can't expect someone to work all these hours go home and clean up after a family make dinner cook clean and go to work and just carry all the slack like you cannot expect one person to do that trust granted i do it but let me tell you something i'll be real tired by the end of the evening all right, I'll be bitchy, I'll be pissed, I'll be angry, I'll be mad, okay? I'll be irritated, aggravated, and elevated, okay? All of that. And I'm one person, and I'm taking this on. Not that I want to take on this all by myself, because that's not what it's supposed to be when you have grown kids in the house, but when you continuously asking them for help and you don't get it, what the fuck are you supposed to do? Just let it sit there and it's get worse? Nah, I'm going to have to eventually do it. And then I'm going to end up spazzing off. Either way, I really think like you need to have like a family meeting with everybody in your household because they need to clean up after themselves. They need to help out. Earn your motherfucking keep up in this bitch. Earn your motherfucking keep, all right? I don't get it. Like the, 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 the youth today, I swear to God, you guys, I swear, I think like they were born on like another planet and then they just, you know what I'm saying? Like they swapped these kids at birth on us. Like it looks like our kid, but they gave us like some alienated kid that just don't want to do anything. Like, I mean, you get your good seeds and you get your bad seeds, but I think like a lot of shit has to do with this like social media today that it just affects these kids' brain cells because I swear to you, they think that they know every fucking thing. And, you know, that goes to say, you know, you still have to teach them yourself. But your husband, let me tell you something, sweetheart. Marriage is work. You are definitely right about that. It definitely is work. However, you need to sit down and explain to him. If I were you before I even, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like before you even go to him, Tiffany, and, and, and explain to him your feelings behind all this what i think would be the good idea so that way you don't forget anything that you mentioned in the conversation i think what would be a really good idea is if you was to write those things down that you think you know would affect the business if he lost or quit his job you know what i'm saying i think that you should just write the pros and the cons down to owning your own business you start a business you write pros and cons. New year started, just open business, takes a while to make money. That is a cool thing to own your own business, but it's not so cool thing to not make any money off of it. You don't see profit in businesses like the first or two years. You don't. That's the downfall about it. And I think that's why a lot of businesses don't last for too long because they feel like when they first open up, they're not thinking rational. They're not thinking reality. They're not thinking realistic that they feel like, you know, my business is going to flourish because I got this, this bomb, bomb ass clothing gear. You ain't the only person that got bomb ass clothing gear. Who's been reputable, who is well known. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? You guys like, you got to go in that shit with a, like a positive mind state. And you also got to kind of think on a negative side. Like it ain't all peaches and cream. When I say like you got to think on the negative side about opening up a business is like this. Okay. I know that I ain't going to make no money the first year or so. I ain't going to be paid like that. That's not negative thinking, but it is kind of negative because you know what I'm saying? But you're thinking realistically, you know what I'm saying? You got to go in with hopes. And then you got to also go in with the fact that, okay, I know that this is going to happen or this may happen. You got to go in and think like realistically, like, okay, I just opened up. I'm, of course, I'm not going to make no money. I just opened up. Some people feel like, well, I just opened up. Why well, ain't getting no sales today? I only got one sale. Bitch, you lucky you got one sale. You just opened up and nobody ain't even heard of you before. You know what I'm saying? So you have to think realistically. It's always cool to own your own anything. But when you own your own anything, trust and believe there are some things behind owning your own anything that means, damn, I got to work for this. And damn, I wish I didn't own this shit. I wish I just was fucking coming here to work and cashing out. Or damn, I wish I was just paying you rent every month. Okay. I'm just saying owning shit is a nice thing, but owning shit is work. Okay. These are the type of people that barely get any sleep like me. I may not, I, I own my own business. Okay. Not to say that 
I'm booming out there, but it's work. It's work. I'm, I manage my own self. I do my own shit. Nobody does it for me. And it's hard when you're the one only person and you're doing everything. So I really think like, you know what I'm saying? You need to sit down and have a long talk with your family. But for your husband's part with the marijuana we shop, I think like that really should be discussed in private. You know what I'm saying? But I really do feel like you and your husband need to sit down and talk with your kids about their cleansiness and their laziness. That's just, that's just my take on that because I have done that. And let me tell you something. After a while, and you keep talking to the person about the same motherfucking thing, that shit gets to be real annoying, okay? And you start to feel like they disrespecting you, and they don't give two fucks about you, okay? That's how I take it. Like, oh, they don't really give a fuck about me. Because if they really cared enough, then I would not be standing here scrubbing these dishes out that they done made all day after I done been at work all day long and all the other errands that I had to run, okay? This is how I feel. So it begins to be like a form of, oh, you got to crawl my, my scar. It begins to be a, a form of disrespect to me in my eyes. That's how I take it, okay? That's definitely how I take it. So I would definitely have a conversation with everybody in the household. And let's sit down and we're going to write this shit down. If they don't know who to wash dishes, then you know what? Make them a chart. Your son wash on this day and your daughter wash on this day. Or he wash on this week, but they get it done. They don't have to get it done. This is what sometimes you have to do for these young adults because they claim they don't know or they claim no one told them or they claim they forgot. I'd be wrong if I forgot to pay the motherfucking light bill or the internet bill so your ass can't get on the internet or anything. I'd be damned if I forget to pay the rent or the mortgage. Now you're homeless. You know what I'm saying? I'd be damned if I forgot your ass at school or you needed something from me. I, you know, we can't, we don't forget because we can't forget. So we have to make sure that they don't forget. And if you need a little post it note and you need a little sign in the refrigerator, because I know your little black ass going to go up in there and find something to eat, then by all means, I'll be more than happy to put your chores and what the fuck need to be done on what the fuck date and have these shits done before I get to where I got to go to, which is home. Point blank, period. Okay. So, moving on to the next. I mean, who told her to come? She is a pain in the butt for real she is. All right, you guys, so let's get on to this one. I'm only doing two today, you know, because it's already late, like I said. So I'm only going to do two. <clears throat> hey, April, first off, I love your channel, and we've been and I have been watching your videos for years. I wish you all the best and much continued success in the future. I'm so sorry this is super long. Feel free to cut down as necessary. Just wanted to give a full picture. You can call me Michelle. Um, you can call me Michelle, and I would love your advice on this situation. I am a young professional and find myself struggling with feelings of inadequacy and disappointment with my current life situations. The main things that I am dissatisfied with in my life are my living situation, my weight, my appearance, my financial situation, and my social life. First, I recently got married a couple of months ago, and because of my and my husband's financial situation, and in the aftermath of paying for a portion of our, our wedding, we live with my mom. I have lived at home since I moved back home to my parents' house to attend grad school locally after graduating from undergrad out of state in 2012. Side note, my dad passed away in 2016, so that's why it's just me and my mom now. <clears throat> Excuse me. My husband, then fiance, moved in with us last year in the summer of 2017 and saved up to pay for the catering at our reception and other wedding-related expenses since none of his family was in a position to help out. My mom paid for the bulk of our wedding. All that is to say my mom has really been helping us out financially, which we're very appreciative for. We both have full-time jobs, but we are not in a place yet to move out on our own. I make slightly more than my husband, but I work in the social services field, so needless to say, I don't make much. Plus, I have six-figure student loan debt from undergrad, which has held me back from moving out even before we got engaged. In the last few months, I've applied to other higher-paying jobs, but no luck. I currently have a weekend PRN job, but haven't really had the time to volunteer for shifts recently. Though I get... Though I get this, I find myself being very unhappy that we do not live on our own. It's not permanent and we're working to save up to move out, but there is no prospective date in sight for us to move. 
I think that I struggle with the self efficiency piece of feeling like this is not what I picture for my married life. And so I get down on myself, though I know it's a team effort and it's a never ending cycle. The worst is when people ask us um, where we're living now or if we're still in the city. And sometimes it feels embarrassing to tell people we still live with my mom. I try not to care what other people think, but it's hard. We have a three-story house, so we just stay upstairs, and my mom's bedroom is downstairs. So it's not that we don't have our own space. It's more the feeling of wanting to have our own. We don't have to pay rent, and my mom has just recently asked us to start paying the utilities, which we're happy to do. So she's really helped us out. So I don't want to seem ungrateful for this because we both are not ungrateful. I think it's more for me that I've lived in this house almost my entire life. 26 plus years and I'm ready for a fresh start in our own space. To switch gears, I've been struggling with my weight for the last few years. I basically gained about 50 to 60 pounds over the last six years, mostly during grad school because of my poor eating habits and lack of exercise. I'm 5'10 and I weigh around 240 pounds, so I wear a 14 or 16 in clothes. It's somewhat easier for me to camouflage my weight since I'm tall but I have a large chest and carry weight in my stomach area. So it makes me look even bigger and it makes me feel self-conscious in tighter fitting clothes. I keep having false starts and changing my even eating habits and getting more exercise, which is frustrating. I really hoped that I would lose weight prior to my wedding, but that didn't happen. I also feel like this goes into issues I have with my social circle. I have friends, but a few of my closest friends live out of state, and I've just I've drifted apart from them um, that I had in grad school. I also feel like some other friends I, I have, I'm just not as close to beyond doing things with them in a group social setting. Sometimes I also feel like because of me not always being the most fashionable and done up person, I'm not invited to go out with these friends, if this makes sense to you. I'm friends with these people through a group we're in, but it seems like a smaller portion of that group always gets together with each other and leaves out certain people in the group all the time. Not to say I'm obligated to be invited, but when it's basically the same group minus just a couple of people and you're one of the excluded ones, that makes you wonder. I get that. It's one of those things where I feel like I would be the picture taker. Okay, wait. It's one of those things where I feel like I would be the picture taker for the group or you would stand out at least the fashionable, the least fashionable in the group pick. Basically, all this is to say is I'm ready to be happy and I'm going into full glow up mode going into 2019. I'm just tired of being unhappy and how my life is going. I'm currently taking, um, I'm just going to say medication. I'm currently taking medication so that I can apply to, phys no, I'm currently taking pre request, whatever. Okay. So that I can apply to a physician assistant school next year, because I have always had an interest in medicine and I want to help people. In addition, in my area, I could make almost triple what I have made currently salary wise, because basically from under 40K to over six figures in only two years time. I would have the money to get my finances in shape and afford a new car. Excuse me. I would have the money to get my finances in shape and afford a new car, which I really need since my car is almost 16 years old and has cost me a lot in repairs and to just have fun and travel with, which I really do. My question is this. How do you feel about glowing up in private versus public? What I mean by that is, while you're working on yourself in multiple ways, do you share this with others or surprise them when you emerge on the other side as an overall better you? I think the question is specifically aimed at friendships and how people treat you now versus how they treat you when you look better. Have more going on for yourself, etc. Obviously, I get you should dump people who don't like you for you. But when it's not something they blatantly told you or done to you, more your perception of their behavior, do you give people a second chance? So, I don't remember she changed her name, but I don't think she did. But we're just going to call her, we're going to call her April, okay? 
Oh, she said Michelle. She didn't call Michelle. So basically, Michelle is just, okay, overwhelmed with life. Okay, so Michelle and her husband live at home with her mother. They live in a three-story house, so it's still like they have their own space. But she just wants to move out. She's been there all her life. She wants her own. She wants to get a new car. She wants to be more social. She wants to work on losing weight. She wants to work on her appearance. And I get that. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Let me let me just tell you this. There are days that I just don't do anything with myself. Like, I mean, I, granted, I take a shower. But like today, I just look like a piece of shit. And yesterday, I looked like a piece of shit. And the day before that, I looked like a piece of shit. And the day before that, and the day before that. And sometimes when you start looking at yourself like that, well, for me, I know when I start looking at myself like that, I just just get in a rut like damn I, I just look bad I need to get it together and though I don't want to put makeup on every day like I really really don't want to put makeup on every day but sometimes just doing your hair and putting a little bit of something on whether it be lip gloss or eyeliner whatever makes you feel a little bit better you know what I'm saying it does make you feel better and trust me when I tell you I I did look like a pure sack of crap before this video okay with with without the makeup. I had two cornrows in my hair that looked like they needed to be done. Okay. So yeah, I look like pure D crap and the attire that I had on was not to be desired. Okay. But I, I get that. Like I, have, I, I, I have like, I don't have friends. Okay. I have a couple of friends. Um, and when I say a couple, that's only on one hand. And, um, Sometimes I can say that I'm okay with that. And then there are times when I can say that I'm not really okay with that because, you know, nobody wants to sit in the house and have nothing to do. Well, I have a lot to do, but, you know, no one wants to be indoors all the time. Sometimes you need a girl's night out to go and hang out and be social with your friends. And like, I don't have that. And not that I don't, I miss it or anything because trust me when I tell you, I love hanging out with my, my kids. I do love hanging out with them and hanging out with my husband. So, you know, but I understand that how she feels like that. This is the reason why I don't really go out and, you know, socialize too much because I always feel like I'm the awkward one. Like I'll say something stupid or I'll just be the most awkward out of a group or at an event. And this always is in the back of my head. Like, and I feel sometimes like a social outcast. Okay. So I don't really go out a lot to like big events and clubs. I don't do any of those things only because for one, that's just not my thing. Like I'm a very introverted person. I don't really like to be around a lot of people because, you know, for me, it just takes me out of the zone and it kind of gives me like this really negative vibe. Like, so I really don't like to be around a lot, a lot of people. Okay. However, I do know that it is important to get out and to socialize. You don't want to be a hermit. You don't want to be stuck in the house. But to do a total blow up in private, let me tell you something. First of all, I think that's an amazing idea because you have to be comfortable. Don't just jump out of the box into the fire, sweetheart. Be comfortable with your own skin. Work on yourself. You don't have to go ahead and post everything for everybody and share with everybody because not everything needs to be shared. You have to have your private moments. That's a that's a problem with the world today. Everybody always want to share something on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat and shit. And like you don't have to share your most, you know, private moments. Like, okay, and I'm not knocking anybody for this, but like um Christmas unwrapping of gifts. I don't I don't do that. Like I you know say I did that last year. But it was just more like a vlog. Um, I didn't dedicate the video to opening Christmas gifts. But I just feel like some things you just need to leave private. Like, you know, that's the, that's another reason why I don't do Snapchat. Because I don't really feel like you need to be all in my business all the time. Like, I don't want to video record all the time when I'm outside. I just want to be April and just enjoy my life. But I think, like, a lot of things are good left private. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there are a lot of things that I'm not comfortable with that you will never see me wear out in public, but I would wear them 
for myself or I would probably wear it for a video or I would do a tutorial on it. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not comfortable with it. You have to be okay with yourself. You have to be comfortable in your skin and comfortable with what, what you're doing in order to be able to share that. And I think like if you are uncomfortable with who you are now and you don't have like a good feeling about your weight and your appearance, then I think like, you know what? You should do things to make you happy. And when you're ready to share, then you're ready to share. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to do a total blow up, girl, go ahead and do you. You don't even have to share that shit with nobody. If they see it, they see it. If bitch, you don't, you don't. Makes me know, never mind. And also, like, with the thing about groups and friends and groups and groups and friends, let me tell you something about being friends and being in a group with girls. Bitches are catty. Females in general are catty. And you guys know that y'all are. All right. Y'all know motherfucking well that y'all are some catty ass females. OK, straight up like that. And then we have those that like to just hang out in groups and do all group things. That's cool and all. But sometimes that shit is not needed because you got one bitch, you got two, you got three, you got four. That that's like competition. Somebody always competing with one another, whether y'all want to say so or not. You got somebody in the group who want to feel like she got to be looking the best or she got to get the niggas. Or either way, it's always competition. I feel like, you know, it's cool to go out in groups and shit, but sometimes it's just cool with you and just one friend. That's all you need is just one friend to go hang out with. That's what makes it more endearing. That's what makes it more personable. That's what makes it more fun sometimes when it's just you and your friend. You know what I'm saying? Not all these other bitches in the group, okay? You taking the pictures and shit like that. Like, I don't really like group shit. That's that's the one thing that I don't really care for. Because me personally, I'm like I said, I'm not antisocial, but I don't like to be in a lot. I don't like to be around a lot of people at one time because I just have this thing where I just can't. Okay. But I do feel like hanging out with just one particular person is cool. And if you feel like they're not inviting you to things in this group, the sweetheart, they're not your friend. Sometimes we just got to let these motherfuckers go. Whether you've been friends with them all your life or you've been friends with them for a couple of years. If they're not treating you right and you feeling like you're excluded, then you know what, sweetheart? It's time for you to exclude your own self and go find your own circle, okay? That's why a bitch ain't got no circle. I got a dot. Just a dot. That's all I got is a dot. My circle is this here, my kids and shit. That's my circle, okay? I don't feel like I have to try to fit in. I don't, you know what? That's one thing about me. And that's probably the reason why I don't like to be in big events and be around big groups and crowd of things. And that's probably why I'm introverted because I don't like to feel like I have to fit in. And a lot of times in my life when I've been out and about and I've been in groups or I've been in clubs or I've been somewhere, I always feel like I got to try to fit in. And I always feel awkward. Like I'm like the awkward one that I don't fit in. Okay. I don't be fitting it. And that's okay. That That's okay if I feel that way. I just know that this is not for me and I'm going to go about my business. But I feel like we all have to do things that make us feel good. Now, true indeed, when people come to you, Michelle, and they're asking you, oh, well, where do you guys live at? You don't got to tell them that you're living with your mama. You don't have to tell that. You don't have to tell them that we live in our mother's house. You don't have to tell them where you, what your address is. You just be like, oh, we still live out here. That's it. That's all they need to know. Point blank, period. Some people be so nosy and be just so ready to get in your business. All you have to do is tell them if somebody asks you, oh, where y'all living at? Oh, we still live out here. That's it. I ain't got to tell you where I live at, per se. I don't got to tell you whose house I live in. I don't got to tell you my address. All you need to know is, oh, I still live out here in Crenshaw. Oh, yeah, I still live out here in AZ. Or I still live out here in New York. That's it. Point blank, period. I don't got to tell you all the facts. Sometimes we divulge too much information to people, okay? We, we need to stop doing that. You ain't got to give them all the tea about yourself. Now, you worried about wanting to move on your own. Now, first of all, let me tell you something. I could totally understand that. Because like I said uh, today, I already had to talk with my kids. <coughs> And I already let them know it's time for y'all to grow up because y'all are adults and y'all are going to be moving out on your own. Can't be here forever. All right. Can't be around me forever. We all want our own space. We all want our own place. But here's the thing, sweetheart. 
if you and your husband are both working full-time jobs, okay, and y'all are saving up, and y'all are respectable to your mother, then stay there and help her for as long as you can. Now, you may feel like you don't want to be there because you want your own space. I get that. Your mother may feel totally different because she's be she'll be alone, okay? You just say your father passed away two years ago. <clears throat> okay. So sometimes we have to take into consideration how the other person may be affected. Your mom. Okay. But then we also have to take into consideration that we do want to move out on our own. We do want to have our own little family. We do want to start being progressing adults, okay? Not saying that you guys are not, but I guess when you move out onto your own, you really feel more mature. You really feel grown up. And let me tell you something. Moving out on your own does not make you more grown up, okay? It really, really doesn't. It doesn't make you more grown up. That's when your ass probably sometimes you feel like, I just want to go home. I want to go back to my home, my parents. Okay? Let me tell you, if I could have been a kid much longer, I probably would have been. Because it's, you know, it's tough being a grown up. However, I'm not really sure what you guys are saving up for. But I'm pretty sure that you guys can find something in your price range in order to survive on your own okay you and your husband don't have to have an elaborate apartment you can have a one bedroom fuck you can even have a studio it's still you guys in space though you might need some space from him in the studio so you may want a one bedroom here's the thing sometimes we have to look at our situation and thank god that we are not worse off than the next person because there are some people that have it harder than us, worse than us, okay? So we have to be, you know, we have to look at our situation and think about it. Like, does this make sense? And like she said, like Michelle said, they are grateful, which is good. They are grateful because there are a lot of times when people ain't grateful, you know what I'm saying? But I also feel like there's a time and a place for everything. Trust me. There's a time and a place for everything. And I'll say this. At least you ain't no lazy motherfucker. And at least your husband ain't laying around doing nothing. Okay? Y'all both got jobs. And y'all both helping out with the utilities. They don't pay rent, but they pay utilities. At least y'all do that. You know what I'm saying? There are some that live at home with their parents and their boyfriend or their husband living in. And they don't do a motherfucking thing. And ain't even respectable. Okay? So at least you ha guys have that much together to where you've been to school, you guys are saving up, you guys are respectable, you clean up, you probably cook for your mom, you help her with the utilities. At least you guys can do that. And you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, even though you may feel like it's not enough, just you being there with your mother is more than enough, okay? Meaning she's got company. It gets lonely when you buy yourself in the house. Who wants to be alone? But I understand where you're coming from. You guys want your own. Y'all run around naked, do whatever the fuck y'all want to do in your own space. But we also have to keep and think to ourselves like, listen, when the timing is right, never rush something, okay? Never, never rush something in life. Like, because, like I say, good things come to those who wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, I'll be the first one to tell you that. Good things do come to those who wait. Like, on some real shit, good things come to those who wait. You know? Never rush something. Because when you rush something, it never goes accordingly. Like, on some real shit. And maybe sometimes it does. But I would say, like, eight times out of ten, boo-boo. Being rushed and doing things rushed never come out accordingly. I'll give you a prime example. When I'm running late, or I'm, I'm not running late, and I'm like, oh, I got 30 minutes. I'm going to do my makeup real quick before it's time to leave. Let me tell y'all, my eyeliner be all wonky and jacked the fuck up. My fucking makeup be a, be trash, okay? Be literally be trash. And then I'm running out the door late, okay? So, so cause I'm rushing, I'm rushing, and 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 those eyeliners, they ain't no joke, and okay? So rushing 
is never a good thing, okay? It's always good to wait. Good things come to those who wait. Trust me, when you guys are able to afford it, then you will be okay. There's nothing wrong with wanting your own or wanting to move out onto your own because you guys are married. I get that. I totally get that and I totally understand it. But as long as you guys are being respectable and you are helping out, and like you said, it's like it's still like your own space because it's a three-story house, then live it out for as long as you can. And be there with your mom. You know what I'm saying? Spend time with her. Hang out with her. Do family things with her. This is what you do. I wish my mom owned a house that I could live in with my husband and stuff because a girl would be so happy. Like, seriously, I would be happy because I get to see her every day. And sometimes we take things for granted in life, like, you know, the little things. Like, that might not be a big issue to some people, but it's a little issue. You know what I'm saying? You're not the only one who lives at home with her parents. Trust me. And you're not going to be the last. But you have to work on things a little bit at a time. Let me tell you something. Weight loss is not, losing weight is not easy at all. Trust me when I tell you. Like, I have done it enough times. And it sucks that I have to, like, go back to losing like the pounds that I already lost like I get really down on myself when I when I gain like a pound or two which sucks because I'm only human and listen life is very short okay I'm not going to stress myself out for the rest of my life worrying about weight but I just want to be at a certain size in my life where I'm happy with it and it seems like I just cannot get there I don't know what the fuck it is but I mean I'm happy with my size I just don't like my stomach area but you know That'll that'll come into play sooner or later. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's still sore, sore and swollen and it hurts. But, you know, eventually it'll all fall into place. But working out is hard, hard work. Seriously, working out is like work. You have to be so dedicated to it and so mind motivated to it that, you know what I'm saying, you think about nothing else but like working out, eating healthy, eating healthy. I did slack on the eating healthy. Honestly, I really, really did. And that sucks because once you start eating like unhealthy, you gain the weight. I think like, you know, for you, my dear, this is what I would start. This is how I started working out because I really don't like to go to gyms. I started walking two miles every single day, five days a week, two miles every morning. And it worked out good for me because my legs got stronger and I was able to move better. And I was just able to, you know, get up the steps better. And then that motivated me to working out, like doing other kind of exercises in my home. You know what I'm saying? So for like a good, quite a few months, I just walked, 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 walked. And I was okay with that. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like we have to be motivated. Don't do it for anybody. Just do it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? And don't feel forced, okay? Do not feel forced to lose weight. You do it at your own pace and you do it comfortably and you don't do it with pressure. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes like for me, I see that it helps me if I tell you guys that I'm trying to lose weight because then I know that you guys like are kind of like looking towards updates or like I don't want to let you down with my weight loss so I just continue okay that's what I that's that's how it motivates me right now I can't do no exercise so I'm sorry if I ain't motivating y'all but I'm sorry but you know what I'm saying like I feel like it's losing weight is is a is a is a task Putting it on is real fucking easy, but losing it is is a task, okay? That's like losing a bad boyfriend. You know, that nigga, he ain't shit, and, and he definitely ain't shit, and you trying to get rid of his ass, and he just won't go. Like, for real. That's the only thing I could think of at the time, because they just, they, just, they just stay. They just don't want to go nowhere. They just want to stay. Like you. You, wanna, you just want to stay. Why don't you just go somewhere, huh? Acting like you a baby. You not a baby. Don't be a baby. So I think like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to be motivated. You got to take it one day at a time. Start off with walks. That's the best thing that happened to me. And let me tell you something. I will eat the salad every day, all day. And let me tell you this. I'm so sick of fucking salads right now. Like, seriously. I haven't eaten a salad in like months. But I will eat one now because I haven't eaten them. You got to change it up. Change up your diet. Just try to eat healthy. Eating healthy is hard because who don't want some gummy worms? I'm tired of gummy worms. Who don't want a piece of that cake or that apple pie? Like, I just ate a whole apple pie. Yeah. But 
I think like with us as human beings, we be so hard on ourselves a lot of times. Like I know I be hard on myself, like like my weight. I, I, I walk in front of the mirror every day looking at myself and trying to suck in my stomach. And like, I don't have the, the stomach muscles strong enough right now because of my surgery, but I just get disgusted looking at myself. Like I really do get disgusted. And I know that that's not a good thing when you look at yourself and you feel disgusted, you know, and that, that's why I say we are always hard on ourselves. We, we be so hard on ourselves at times. And I know I be hard on myself all the time. On myself, I'm always hard on myself because I don't like the way I look a lot of times. So my appearance is an issue too. Like, you know, I be self-conscious about what I wear or how I look because I'll be hard on myself. You, you going now? Okay, well, bye. But, you know, we have to we have to feel like this. We have to be comfortable within ourselves and do things for ourselves, okay, to make ourselves happy. So, yeah, glowing up in private, it's okay. There ain't nothing wrong with that shit. I glow up in private. Y'all don't see every picture or every look that I do, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't have to show you guys. I just do shit for myself sometimes to make me feel good. You know what I'm saying? That's what the fuck I do. I don't have to show and prove to everybody. When you see it, bitch, you see it. If you don't, then I hope that bitch you miss the fuck out. Oh, girl. But seriously, honey, I would just just be grateful, like you said you are, with your, your living situation right now. And just save up because saving up for the long haul is always worth it. And good things come to those who wait. And just think of it like as a blessing that your mom is still here and you're able to be under one roof with her to where you guys get along. Because some people don't even get along with their parents where they can't even live with them. So, so honey girl, child, be thankful for that, okay? i will give anything for my mother to move here. i will just snatch her up and make her move here. You know, I would love to live with my mom under the same roof. I mean, I probably couldn't get as freaky deaky as I wanted to with my husband. But the fact that she's just there is more than enough for me. And like I said, glow up in private. and Find you a new group of friends. Find you one good friend, bitch. Find you one good friend. If you ain't got to hang out in groups, I just really don't like that group shit. You know what I'm saying? It'd be too many different um, personalities. You know what I'm saying? Too many different type of attitudes. Too, too many different females. Females is catty bitches anyway. And so you got all these catty bitches around you. One is talking about you. The other one is talking girl please i don't do with the group me and shirley we gonna hang out together and that's that i don't know the bitch named shirley i don't know a bitch named shirley but you got you guys get what i'm saying me and my girl christy we gonna hang out together that's that i'm not hanging out with christy shirley pam monica michelle and I, i'm not doing the whole group shit that's just do, that's just doing the most you know sometimes it's okay but as an all the time thing like nah i'm good with So, you guys, I'm going to go. I hope you guys weren't too bored with this real talk. I am so tired. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sleepy. I haven't really been getting a lot of sleep because of, you know, like, my my hormones. I wake up in sweats and stuff. I've been wearing a patch and shit. But, you know, for the most part, I have been really tired a lot. I have not been getting any really good sleep lately. Um, And I go to bed at a decent time, but I'm just not able to sleep like that. So, and it has a lot to do with the surgery. They say that you become like, you know, you have insomnia. So what I do do is I smoke some weed to go to sleep. Then, you know, when you smoke, you get the munchies. And that's why I've been eating the whole fucking apple pies and shit. You win some, you lose some. Right? But my husband liked me the way I am. So I'm good with that. But, but I'm still wanting to work on my own self, which is my stomach. And once that's gone, then I'm good. I don't really want to lose the weight. I just want to lose the midsection. And then I'm good. I don't want to be skinny. Trust me. I like my size. Bitch got meat on the bones. Mm. And I like my curves, too. So I love you guys. And I will see you in a soon-to-come video. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Thumbs this video up. Yes, I will see you guys soon. Um, uh, never